Okay, so up on top here, where do you have to start? Perfect. Yeah, we have the first set of parentheses, then I've got another set of parentheses inside those. So we're going to start in here. And in there, of course, we have the exponent. 3 squared, which is 9. Now, since we're dealing with a lack of space here, I'm going to cheat and erase and replace rather than rewriting the whole problem, which I know might be a challenge for you on your paper, but I'll go try to go slow so you have time. So we're still working inside this inner set of parentheses. What has to happen next in there? The division. 36 divided by 9 is 4. So we'll take that out and replace it with 4, which is really all we're doing when we rewrite it. We're just writing it out again rather than erasing and replacing. Now all that's left inside that inner parentheses is the addition. 5 plus 4 is 9. Now that parentheses has been reduced to a single number. So I don't need the parentheses in there anymore. Now there are operations on both sides of it. So I can just take the parentheses out and that's it. We're good. Now we're back out to this larger set of parentheses. In there, what do I have to do first? The, the exponent, the square root of 4, which is 2. Perfect. What's next? Multiply, Multiply and divide. Going left to right. We have 18 divided by 6, which is 3. Next, we have 3 times 2, which is 6. Now we're down to just addition and subtraction, so we're going to go left to right. 13 minus 9, 4. 4 minus 3. 1, and 1 plus 6 is 7. So everything inside that parentheses is reduced to a 7. Now I'm going to rewrite this. 7 plus 2. I can take the parentheses out, but I do have to remember to put in multiplication because there was no symbol between that 2 and the parentheses. So it's 2 times what's in the parentheses plus you. So 2 times 7 minus 2 times 5. What do we do next? Multiply it after 8. So 2 times 7 is 14. And then we do the 2 times 5, which is 10. And now we can add and subtract left to right. 7 plus 14, 21 minus 10 is 11. How many of you had 11 for that one? It's not bad. Not the greatest betting average, but to have had worse. Now to problem number two here. The fraction bar tells us we're going to divide, but it is also an enclosing symbol, if you remember. So we have to do everything that's on top first. So I'm going to make room over here to do that. 7 plus 9 times 3 plus 12 Divided by 6. What do I have to do first on there? 9 times 3 is 27. And then, do the division. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Good. Bless you again. And then, 27 plus 27 is 34 plus 2 is 36. So the top of this becomes 36. Now we have to work on the bottom. What happens first on bottom? Let's begin. 5 squared is 25. And then 2 times 8 is 16. 25 minus 16. 
9. So I have 9 on bottom, 36 divided by 9 is 4. Now, since it's early in the morning and you guys are here, I'm going to give you a little bit of a foreshadowing to your first test that's coming up here in just a minute. I look at something like this for a group operator. I'm going to start with this one on the left. This is an enclosing symbol, so I have to do everything on top. So on top, I'm going to do this little short one, 2 times 3. 6, and then I have 7 plus 6, 13. So I have 13 on top there. On bottom, what do I have to do first? Multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. So I've got 13 on top and 13 on bottom there. It's going to equal 1. Technically, we should wait to divide it until we do the other one, but it's not going to change anything. Over on the right side here, on top, what do I have to do first? Multiplication. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 2. 18. On bottom, what do I have to do first? Divide. 22 divided by 2? 11. 7 plus 11. There's 18 again. 18 divided by 18 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. I will catch at least one of you on your first test. There's a problem very similar to that. Doing a problem that is leaving the 1. Just your forewarning. That's part of my twisted sense of humor. I'll warn you about that and see if you still get around. So make a note. The, the object, it is how that will work for one plus one. The point there is try not to entertain me. So don't get that wrong. Okay. So, any questions off the homework from last time? Okay, I do have a quiz to give back to you here, so... On to our new stuff for today. What we're looking at today is going to be kind of a, a crossover, definitely a changing gears from what we have done. We're kind of looking at a crossover between some basic algebra and following formulas and some basic geometry. Now that we've used the order of operations, we can apply it to formulas. We might get a basic formula, like area equals length times width. What that is applying to is the area of a rectangle. So if I have a rectangle, now the way I drew that, you'd never know for sure that was a rectangle. But if I give you square corners, you know it has to be, right? Um, let's say I have a width of 8 inches and a length here of 20 inches. The area is found by simply replacing the length and the width in this formula. So for the length, we're going to put in the 20 inches. For the width, we're going to put in the 8 inches. And then order of operations, well, all we have to do there is multiply. So it's going to be 20 times 8, which is 160. But we also have inches times inches, which is inches squared. So the area of that rectangle is 160 inches squared, or 160 square inches. So if I give you that rectangle, what's its area have to be? Perfect. It's length times width. 
Good, yes, you do not cut the inches squared off. The length is 12 inches, and the width is 5 inches, and it is 12 times 5 is 60. And yes, you should have the inches squared or square inches on it. On a quiz, if you don't have that, I'm not going to mark it wrong, but it's something to get in the habit of. It's not always going to be a nice, neat little rectangle like that. We might have a shape like this. Pretend those lines are all square corners. So this might be 12 inches, 4 inches. Let's see, this up here is... 18 inches, and down here, we're going to call this 28 inches. Now, first of all, you'll notice there are two sides that are missing. So the first thing we have to be able to do is find the missing sides. This one here is probably the simplest. Now, is that side vertical or horizontal? It's vertical. It goes up and down. Since it is vertical, that means it can only be related to other vertical sides. So these two sides here are the only sides we can really use to find its length. Well, the distance from the bottom to the top can be found by going on either side. Either this one all at once, which we don't know, or we can go over here and combine these two sides. If we combine those two sides, what is that overall length? 16 inches, 12 plus 4, which means this side here must also be a total of 16 inches. So that side is just 16 inches because it's the only side that goes up there. Going the other way, we're missing this side here. That's a horizontal side. So we can only use other horizontal sides to find its length. Now for this one, from here to here is the same length, whether we go across the bottom or across the top. Across the bottom, it's 28 inches. So across the top, it must also be 28 inches. If this is 18, what's this side have to be? 10 inches. Now that we have the missing sides, that's one of the tough parts. In fact, that's one of the skills I find that students in the last five years or so struggle with the most, is finding those missing dimensions. So if you have a question on how I found it, don't be afraid to speak up and ask me how to find those. That's an important skill that, like I said, a lot of people do struggle with. So now our next step, we have to find the area of this. Now, there are two different ways I can find the area of this thing. The first way is to just cut it into smaller pieces. Like I might cut it like that. Now I have two pieces. Piece one is a rectangle. What are the dimensions of piece one? Perfect, 16 by 18. So 16 inches times 18 inches is going to give us what? Is it 288? Perfect. 288 square inches. Don't be afraid to double check me today. The last couple of days, my internal calculator has been way off. So I don't know what happened over Labor Day, but we're not getting back into the swing of things real quickly. Piece two, what are its dimensions? 10 by 12. So 10 times 12. Very good. 10 inches times 12 inches, 120 inches. So that gives us a total of 288 plus 120 of 408 square inches for area. There is another way we could have done that. What we could have done is I could have actually just filled in this corner here. And I have a large rectangle that's 16 by 28. And I could have found that area, 16 inches by 28 inches, which is, what, 448? Is that correct? 
Okay, perfect. And then I have to subtract out this missing piece in the corner here, which is 4 by 10. Which is 40 inches squared. So you can subtract, you get 408. Now in a problem like this last example, probably about the same level of difficulty either way, whether you cut it into smaller pieces and add them together, or whether you find a bigger piece and subtract that off. There will be cases where it's easier to do one way other than the other. Um, for example, Let's say this is four inches, eight inches, 14 inches, 14 inches here as well, four inches, six inches, and let's see, this is going to be eight inches like this for. So we have two dimensions we need to find here first. First one I want to look at is this one here. To find that being vertical, I can only use my other vertical dimensions. So those five dimensions come into play. These two here are going to cancel each other out. What I mean by that is since they're both eight inches deep, that means this edge and this edge line up. I can go straight across there if I wanted to. So now, from bottom to top, I have 14 inches up this side. I have to have 14 inches going up the right side as well. If this piece is 4, what's this piece up here have to be? 10. Very good. I have to have that total of 14 inches. So that piece is 10 inches. Going the other direction, I'm looking for this side here, so I can only use my other horizontal sides. Going from right side, left side to right side, across the bottom, I have 14 plus 6 makes 20 inches. So I have to have 20 inches across the top as well. Well, I've got four and four here. How much is left for this? It has to be 12 inches to add up to 20. Four, four, and 12 add up to 20. So now we have all the missing dimensions. However, if I tried to chop this into smaller pieces, I don't know, maybe I'd chop it here, here, and here. That could get kind of ugly. I could do it. Piece one here is 4 inches by 14 inches. Otherwise known as 56 inches squared. Piece two here, well that's 4, I've got to find this dimension. What's that dimension going to be? Perfect. If I look at this rectangle, it's 14 here, so it's got to be 14 here. So 8 plus 6. So this is that piece 6. So piece 2 is 4 inches by 6 inches. That's 24 inches squared. Piece 3 here is back to being 14 inches. What's this dimension here? Well, again, we'd have to look at this whole rectangle. This is 12, so this has to be 12. We've got 6 here, so this one has to be 6. So 6 inches there. So that is 14 by 6 inches, otherwise known as 84. 
And then the fourth piece here is 10 by 6. So 60 inches squared. So that all adds up to 224, I believe, square inches for my area. Does that look right? Perfect. The other way would have been to just make this one big rectangle. That big rectangle is 20 inches by 14 inches, my overall dimension which is 280 square inches. And from that, I can subtract out the eight by four rectangle. That's 32 inches squared. Puts me down to 248. Then I subtract out this one here that is four by six. Which is 24 inches squared. Let's be down to 224. Notice we get the same answer either way. To me, in this case, finding the bigger rectangle and subtracting out the pieces was easier. There will be other cases, of course, where it's easier to divide it up. For example, This case here. Let's say this is four inches, six inches, eight inches, ten inches, eight inches. Oh, it's down to six. There are six inches here. We'll go sixteen inches across here. Now, missing dimensions to find again. This one's going to be the easy one to find. What's it going to be? 18 inches. Good. We use the other horizontal dimensions. Those add up to 18 across the bottom, so it has to be 18 across the top. This dimension here is a little bit more difficult to find. I know that the distance across here has to be the same from looking at this rectangle as the distance across there. I know this piece is 10. If I knew this piece, they would add up to make this missing side here in purple. So I need to find this piece here. To do that, I'm going to jump over here to look at this rectangle. This is 16 here, so this must be 16. What's this piece have to be? 10. 10 plus 6 makes 16. If that's 10, because of this middle rectangle, this also has to be 10. Because opposite sides of a rectangle are the same. So what's that make this side over here? 20 inches. Good. 10 plus 10 is 20. Now that we have all those dimensions, the rest of it should be relatively simple. I'm going to cut it here and here. And your rectangles one, two, and three. Well, rectangle one, what are its dimensions? 16 times four, or 64 inches squared. Rectangle two, what are its dimensions? 10 by eight, or 80 inches squared. And rectangle three, 20 by six, or 120 inches squared, which is 264 inches squared for my total area. If I try to do a bigger rectangle on that one, well, this isn't one nice little rectangle subtract out. It's harder to find the area of the piece to subtract out. So this is a problem where I'd say it would be easier to add up the missing pieces. There will be other problems where it's probably about the same amount of work again to go either way. You know, problems like this. The 
Let's say I tell you this is two inches. Let's go five inches here and here. Six inches. Five inches. Ten inches here and here. And across the bottom, we're going to go 14 inches. There's only one missing dimension here, that's the top. The question I'm gonna to pose to you, it looks like it should be, should that top be 14 inches? Well, if all my corners are square corners, this is five inches and that is five inches, which means both sides line up, right? This is five inches and that's five inches, which means both sides line up. Which means if this is 14, that's got to be 14. So yes, the top does have to be 14 inches. Now here, finding the area, I can easily cut it across like that into three rectangles. What's the dimensions of rectangle number one? Two inches by 14 inches. 28 square inches. Rectangle two is all trickier. It's six inches by what? This comes out to be four. We've got 14 minus five here and minus five there it gives us four inches. Six by four gives us 24 inches squared. And piece three is what dimension? 10 by 14. Or 140 inches squared adds up to 192 inches squared for our area. Now you could have done this one, you could have found the big rectangle, add this up to get that that's 18 by 14, then subtract out the two 5 by 6 rectangles, that would work. Next is volume. Volume has the basic formula of length times width times height. That only works if we have a box. Pretend that looks like a box. So we've got 12 inches by 6 inches by 8 inches. That volume, length, times width, times height, which is going to give us what? 576, I believe, inches cubed, because inches times inches times inches. That formula... Length times width times height, like we said, only works if this is a box. There's a more generic formula that works better, and that is volume is equal to an area times a height. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I have a shape like this. Oh, let's say this is four, two, four, two, eleven, seven, and seven. What's this dimension here have to be? Three inches. Good. Now I'm going to add to this. the added piece that it is a depth to it. That depth I'm going to give you is, oh, let's just tell you that's six inches. 
To find the volume of this, the easiest way to do it is to find the area of this piece here. The reason I'm choosing that piece is because that's the piece, it's called the base. It's what the shape is based off of. If you think about it, I could take that side and I could slide it through the whole object. So I'm going to find the area of that piece. I'm going to cut it across here. That top piece there, what's its area? It is 2 times 11. Very good. So that's 22 square inches. The second piece here, what's that area? 7 times 3. Very good. So that's 21 inches squared. So that adds up to give us an area of the base of 43 inches squared. I add those up. So my volume is found by taking that area of 43 inches squared and multiplying by, what's the height? Six inches. 43 times six is 258 inches squared times inches is inches cubed. What do you think, not so bad? One more example. The base is not always the top or bottom. Sometimes the base can be the side. Let me give you an example where a base is the side. That didn't work very well. Let me try that a little bit more. There. That's a little better. So let's say that this here is 8 inches, 6 inches, we go 4 inches here, 2 inches here, we'll go 5 inches here, three inches there and let's say that this is 14 inches across the bottom two dimensions I need to find what's this dimension here oops that's that one I know that dimension I know these horizontal dimensions I need to find this one right here what is it seven very good I have three and four I have to add up to 14, so I need seven more inches right there. So that has to be seven inches. Next, what's this piece here? Well, I need to know this length. It'd be this length plus the five, right? Well, down here, this is six, this is two, so this length has to be four inches. So this one's four, four and five make nine inches. The base of this is this side over here. So I need to find the area of that side. So I'm going to cut it here and here. Piece one here is nine by three, right? That's 27 inches. What's piece two? Four times seven. 28 inches squared. And piece three? Four times six. is 24 inches squared. That adds up to 79 square inches. That is the area of the base. So what am I going to do that to find the volume? Yeah, I take that 79 inches squared times my height is now sideways like that times 8 inches, which is going to be 632, I believe, inches cubed.
Is that correct? Okay, perfect. Well, we've only got about six minutes left, so I'm going to give you some time to start on the homework. In the book, page 17 through 19. Problems 1 through 39 in the odds. Again, the first few may be kind of simple. Um, feel free to skip over and do some of the more difficult ones. 